All right, all right. Jeez, it's cold here for me, at least. Yes, I am. I am live. Stop. Stop. <clears throat> Wait, did I? I I unmuted myself. Yeah, yeah, okay. I, it's. I feel like this is gonna become a problem for me at some point. Like I start playing and then I, and and then I just forgot to unmute my mic. <laughs> That would be uh, embarrassing. Anyways, uh, welcome back to Love Exalt. Um, I think we only have two uh, scenes, or yeah, two scenes to uh, to do for uh, this game, because this game is still in early access, so the game is not finished yet. But I will finish what it is uh, finished in the game so far. And I'll come back to this game whenever there's updates. But yeah, for now, let's just continue. Act 4, or Scene 4, actually. It's uh, still Act 1, but Scene 4. My god, I, I'm... I hope I don't... I don't stay as freezing uh, for the entirety of the stream. It would be a bit uncomfortable. Anyways. Suit Imp and the officiary trade stories around the dining cabin grand te table while Tank and Pet hunt for snacks in the kitchen. Guardian and Mimi head downstairs. I mean, I'm currently wearing my quite a warm hoodie, which kind of serves as my pajama. I swear, it's spring. It shouldn't be that co cold, right? Yes, it's cold, but like not as cold as, like, winter. The officiary just finished a true crime tale about a break-in at a store named Black Rainbow Apparel. Let me summarize it. The twin imps who ran the shop were found bludgeoned to death in a pool of their own dried bur burgundy fiend blood. The doors were still locked. There were no signs of forced entry. The only thing missing from their inventory was a single pair of shoes. Next up, it's Suit's turn. But I'd like to turn, uh, to take a turn for myself first. Huh. I'd like to remind you why I'm narrating all this in the first place. Please do, because I don't think we ever got a, an explanation for that. It's worth remembering, lest you get lost in the readings. Please recall the story of Yelson Merriweather. He was a dragonborn of a holy bloodline in the year 8, 1803. Uh, he may have been Suit's great 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 great... Did I say great enough? Grandfather. I'm not sure. As a hatchling, he loved to create towers of blocks and intricate rubed Goldberg machines. But he was sickly, oft bedridden, and his mother overfed him with chlor flowers as his brain developed. Uh, in adolescence, his blood took on many colors beyond cyan, and he developed a second uh, secondary chronic illness which ha addled his sharp mind uh, and drove him to sit alone in his room and pour thousands of hours into inventions which never quite went anywhere. The only thing, uh, in the only invention he, of his we remember is the blizzard prognosticator. Merryweather collected blue fireflies native to the summit lands and locked them in a dozen glass tubes. He arranged the tubes together in a circle uh, so that he, the father fireflies would not get too lonely. To his colleagues in the university, he introduced the jars of spastic insects as his jury of philo philo philosophical counselors. Whenever the air around the university changed pressure, Merryweather's fireflies instinctively clustered at the bottom of their glass chambers, and their fervent buzz created enough friction to, uh, heat to trigger a sensor, a sensor which dropped the nose to, of a tiny silver steel uh, reflex hammer down to a grand crystal bell at the apex of his great machine. 
And those who, who heard the ringing of this bell were warned that the ne next ice storm is soon approached. There. I took my turn. Let's get back to the dining cabin. How did that explain anything? I'm confused. How serendipitous, Miss Officiary, that when we first met in the upper cabin, we were both reading hidden books. You, your textbooks, and, uh, uh, and I, my case file. Yeah, I know, right? Hey, I was secretly reading, too. I read all the time. Oh, what are you? What were you reading? The emergency policies memo posted on the cabin wall. Hey, miss. When you were trapped in that front cabin, did you get a chance to call for help in the on the radio? Unless we get rescued, I'm not gonna live too far past day three. Because you know, I'm a gremlin. What makes you say that? I'll speak of my time in the front cabin later. For now, let's share some more stories. Oh. Okay. Let's go with suit. Let's go with suit. No questions asked. No questions asked. Let's go with the, one of the, my favorite characters in this game. <laughs> Could I suit you with a spot of dire mythology, Imp? The officiary stops listening. Just don't put me to sleep. <laughs> no, it's a, it's invigorating. Once I borrowed a holy book from a poet, and within its tattered, water-worn pages, I discovered a synopsis of a crea uh, creation myth. There is no mention of your people's sides of things. Um, the sides of imps and demons, I mean. But I'd like to share it with you regardless. Sure. May I? Ah, yes. This better be good, though. Suit lifts his arms, closes his eyes, and speaks wholly from memory. This is the story of Craxes, Io, and the and their child Sicalia. After the ice storm uh, that killed the world. There was a flood that brought it to its knees once more. Waters of brown salt racked the earth, an act of malfeasance on the part of the first god who was disappointed in himself for the many failures he had wrought through his attempt at perfect creation. In time, the people who lived on earth overbloomed in churning generations and the visitors of beauty they layered onto the world around them, and it came to be that they destroyed themselves and almost everything else with a fl flower. The natural cycle of the sun and the moon collapsed under the power of the death flower, and all perished with great suffering. But for two families. Sure. <laughs> One family lived atop a summit, and the other in a deep forest, protected from the tendrils of the flower. The names and houses of both families have since been forgotten, but they came to an accord that they were not uniquely strong nor benevolent for having survived. If they were to, uh, if they were to sire enough children, then they were sure the next catastrophe would be more devastating than the ice storm, the flood, and their own mach uh, machinations combined. They mitigated their bloodlines for many, uh, many thousands of years, begetting many ch children of many races, but never allowed a, allowing their numbers to blossom into a cop, a, a cop bleh, apocalypse once more. It came to pass that the newfound space and free nutrients on the earth gave rise to an age of beasts. Many, uh, many times the children of the two families found themselves hunted near to extinction. But, at the last breath, two of these children protected half a myriad from catastrophe each, 
and each in accordance with their nature. The first was Il, a girl of the mountains who staved off the starvation of, with the ingu ingenuity of her grand and impossibly intricate first machine. And the second was Kraxas, a child who eradicated all forms of life safe for his own kind with a wide berth around himself wherever he tra traveled. He was the god of the great hunt. Also, why do I feel like Kraxas makes me think of Roxas in terms of name? It's really close. <laughs> no connection, I, uh, though. I doubt. It was at the dawn of our age that these two came to know each other. Together, they begot the third god, a girl born in grace, Sicalia, the god of sunlight and moonlight. Sure. She was born in the pit of a, continu a continental pockmark, far at the end of the earth. And this was the first place where, many millennia ago, the first death flower had reached its blossom. She was born as an adult with two bodies, three faces, and eight limbs. Damn, that sounds... Eldritch Horror-ish. One by one, she removed her extraneous ex aspects and gave them to the people of the Earth as gifts. For at this time, there were few beasts left, and she found the scarcity endured by her parents' children repugnant when compared against the gratuity of her own form. As she disconstructed herself, her arms became the victimless nourishment of the Sicalian nut trees, and her legs became, became the scaffolds by which coin was the first extracted from the mountains. When she had but two arms and legs left, she removed two of her free faces and made them into the sun and the moon. Now, at last, she rese resembled a mortal woman. Interesting. Come on. Shit. Please. Oh my god, stop bouncing all over the place. There we go. Not gonna mention where her other body went then, huh? Cheer picking ass poets. My side is le completely left out. But Sicalia was still not satisfied. She looked on the failed works of the first god and horrors that his children, her ancestors, had wrought with their flower. She looked on her mother's cold machines and her father's empty forests, and she sought a return to the old cycle of life, to the simple age of water and stone, before anything green, before the ice storm and the salt flood and the yellowing of all plants, a return to the age that had not known artifice nor brut brutality. And at last, at the fever point, Amid a, congre a congregation of 6,000 devotees, Sicalia relinquished her last face, her last arms, her last legs, her last body, and she ascended to the form of a concept. She became the law of entropy. Sure. Huh. Quite, some it, uh, quite something, isn't it? Huh? I'm awake. Your your story didn't make me asle fall asleep. Good job. <laughs> Thorberry. Okay. A myriad is 10,000 people. What? Of course, everyone knows that, don't they? Also, you were paying attention. Even if the rest was nonsense, uh of the the rest of that was nonsense. It is true that there were only 10,000 people alive in the world at one point, or even less. 
I just doubt half a myriad were protected by a single child each. So you liked it, did you, miss? Don't hound me for praise. I suppose it was alright. Eh, at least she enjoyed it a bit. Well, what should I read you to? What would you like to hear? Anything's fine, miss. Imp? Can't we just skip your turn? That's rude. <laughs> Imp rests, rests his baggy eyes, chest on the table. The officiary considers patting him on the back. Don't. No, he'd probably bite me if I tried to comfort him. My, oh, my dearest readers, I have decided to leave the Broken Moon trilogy unfinished due to declining sales. I'll be competing at the towers with my new pet uh, next month if you wish to support me fin financially, your dutiful master. Huh, so I would assume that pet's master is a um, writer? Interesting. Not going to make it too far past day three, you said, imp. Are you losing hope already? I could read you some p positive news stories, though the clippings are quite yellowed. Ew, no. While in the state of dejection, I believe Imp would prefer a, a tale most dark and grizzled. A happy story would give him grave metal sickness, I'm sure. Is that right, Imp? Yeah, I like dark shit. He's right. <laughs> uh, I don't know. But he is the master of pet. Definitely. How does he know uh, me so well already? He has... Uh, yeah. Has he been reading my thoughts? <laughs> he psychologically owned me in the AB game. I wonder if... You know what? I have to get out of my own head and just fucking ask him already. I just can't go on like this. Once, uh, one second before you start my next, this next story, Miss Officey. Hey, suit. I, uh, I wanted to ask you something. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck is this question? Are you gay? <laughs> what? <laughs> Why? <laughs> what is this type of question? <laughs> I'm not giving you any undue information. Yes, I got it. How should I know? I haven't been, uh, I haven't even had my first kiss. I couldn't get a date in university. Not with one of the bespectacled lion, uh, Lillian girls and their murky Mat mage robes, nor with the hulking male monks in their training wraps who brawled bi nightly in the debate parlor, a parlor. And after grad, I went full time at the investigation bureau. I think he doesn't know himself, <laughs> which is fine. Well, I'm probably bisexual or something, I don't know. I'm unlearned in the capacious kaleidoscope cal of love. I can't draw any conclusions yet. Well, he doesn't know. He needs to experiment. I understand. Imp deflates. Uh, we'll discuss this later. I believe we're trampling all over the good lady's turn. Please, share a story, miss. Whatever. 
Share your smelly news clipboard about a pet rescued from a tree. Oh, Saccharine. I'm doing fine. Also, welcome to the stream. You should know... Uh, you know what would be better? A tail most dark and grizzled. Perk your pointy ears, imp, and allow me to begrime the mood. The fishery plucks her order book from her breast pocket and licks a thumb to flip through it. As I mentioned earlier, I kept a, I keep a selection of true crime between pages 12 and 13. How about uh, how about the murder of a renowned airship captain, true shot gol golfer, and the massacre of his vessel and entered at the wharf? Oh yes. Or perhaps the salacious exploit of the golden-eyed card shark, Dick Appleton. No fucking, uh, no fuck Dick. What? Or the gravity spree by the notorious Bentley and uh, bandit and lover duo of the old York trade square. No. Or the aeronaut who anchored his hot air balloon to a vault which contained a stone of banknotes equal to the value of a personoid monster and simply floated off into the sunset with the whole damn thing? Eh, one sounds pretty cool, but no, do the airship ma massacre. That was Johnny's first time in the papers, wasn't it? He's been rushing up, uh, uh, he's been running as a solo at the towers this season. And the higher ups gotta put a public apology every time they make the mistake of letting him compete. When he drops in the Royale, you see a huge dead zone bloom out around him. No body loots nearby. You seem to know uh, more about him than I do, but let me try my best here. <clears throat> She preambles her story with dates, times, names, and places. But M peaks when she reads the radio transcript between the wharfmaster and the doomed uh, airship captain, a man named True Shot Golfer, father of Go John Golfer. It's a bit confusing with John and Johnny. And then the officiary throws in a side character named Jimmy, the wharfmaster's assistant. John Jimmy, uh, John Johnny Jimmy, jeez. And after that, there's gonna be Jonathan. <laughs> the airship was just coming to in to dock, right? Indeed. She reads, "Mend the pulleys in and the boring lines, boys. Uh, two ninety fours coming in, and watch yourselves when we unload." She's got lively car, car bleh, lively cargo. Please pardon me not being able to speak speak correctly. Big finfish, you are clear for landing. Main gates are open. Bring her down soft and easy. We've got a sour wind coming in the, this evening. Been uh, been a while since you've docked in at my par port, Mister Golfer. I heard your son's been working lumber this summer, up in the yard forest. He's a good man. Just start a, a bit slow to start his life. You got her in easy now, gopher. And I'll buy you a uh, and you, your boy a few courses on of oven roasted sea salted meat after your you've unloaded your cargo. How's the haul been? You get some real nasty killers in this batch. Coffee spilled in the transcript in the panic that erupted when the airship finally touched down, so this next moment has been lost. But the wharfmaster has test test the testified that during this lost portion, garbled snickers pierced through the radio stick white noise. Finally, Captain Golfer responded, but all he said was... Johnny. Your son? Johnny. You went through the wall. 
Johnny went through the wall? You mean your son, John Golfer, right? The officiary pauses. Multiple uncontradictory multiple uncontradictory fact checked accounts are all agree. True shot was not the kind of mind man to use nickname. My God, my to use nicknames, even for his own son. Especially not for his own son. She resumes. The airship belly flopped down into the water to the wharf, dousing all onlookers, as attested by investigation teams, team members, who had to pay a launderer to clean their slick suits and business loafers, and people spilled from the airship, flowing over each other in panicked waves. Crew, passengers, and even the criminals they were carrying as cargo Everyone jumped off, screaming. Most of them leapt into the water. Uh, yeah, into the water, still colorated and handcuffed. That sounds awful. Sakes, golfer! I said, take her down easy. He's on the streak. Who? Johnny. He's on his streak. Johnny. Who's Johnny? His kill streak. Don't let him keep. Damn. The wharf master, uh, master's assistant, Jimmy, omitted the following sound from the strict transcription a sickening, crunchy thud. Empty statics crackled thereafter. And on the upper deck, clad in makeshift sailor uh, sailor's outfit stolen from the corpse of the ship's crew, with a blood-soaked silver steel oar propped on his shoulder, there stood a single smiling kid. Cruel Johnny Silver. Bam! Imp sits up, claws uh, locked to the table. And then he just sank into the solid floor of the ship like a phantom, right? Uh, found Lee's uh, away in the same outfit with a fresh pair of shoes. Woo! What a fucking menace! A uh, guardian is this. It seems I had the right idea indeed. Thanks, Miss Officiary. That kind, uh, that kind of got me turned up a bit. Good. I'm glad you're feeling better. I have restored your will to go on now, Imp. Yeah, kinda. Still gonna be hellish tried and lift past through day three. But, I think I'm finally ready to make some plays. The flag point ship principle. Huh. Ahem. Um, hello again. I hope you all had lots of fun with the first third rule game. Take some time to relax, the next one will be later tonight. I hope one of you guys die. Also, a special announcement will be made in like for uh, an hour or so. For now, the only thing I'll tell you is watch your step. Healer cracks an eye open and peels his face off the suede leaf cabin wall seat. Chef? Some time passes with Chef absent in the last minutes of midday, lost somewhere among the fog of the noontime blue interior lights. Healer can't get back to sleep without him. Also, since those two got both 24 hours of protection, uh, they will be immune for the, the next game, right? Technically, because since it ha happens later tonight, they should still have the protection. The radio tower at the door was knocked off its cradle earlier. In the post-game blur, static burns and crackles from the speaker. I mean, both Chef and Healer has the same... 
Well, okay. Well, no, they both have the same protection. Actually, no. Kind of, kind of off by certain uh, by like five minutes, but I think they should be fine still. Chef and healer were uh, are sprawled on the floor. Healer's head on Chef's fuzzy stomach. The fog of the lights knots and whirls above their baggy eyes. Yeah, I just remembered. Yeah, fucking dude. Fuck, man. It's like that summer again. The one where it was like the hottest that summer they ever recorded. When we climbed the free XP weekend, signed, uh, uh, signed up on Yard Forest Grand Hill in the milky dusk. Dude, I knew it was uh, it was going to be to rain. But I still dragged you up there on the top of the big electric letters. Yeah, I remember. We got zapped and we fell off uh, the XP P. It was my plan. I talked you into it. But I bring that up. I'm trying to draw a parallel between. I understand, Chef. Sometimes you keep things from me for the sake of a plan, and you make your pl and your plans are great. They really work. We had a nice night holding hands uh, up on the big P, man. And we came out of the AB game with more protection combined than any other pair of players. But I just keep returning to the same question. Why didn't you tell me? Chef shakes his head. I'm sorry. Healer pulls his face off Chef's stomach and backs him into a corner again. Why, dude? Chef winces and adjusts his shirt repeatedly. Well, he said no pre-gaming. That's not why. You, you said you formed a plan, that plan that last night and we had time alone together in the kitchen this morning. Chef wrestles his own eyebrows. Maybe it would have been somehow counted as you showing your choice to me through in inaction. If you hadn't known that I was going to swap our buttons and then spam your own choice as soon as the final round started. Quit it. <laughs> okay, yeah, sorry. I'm just theory crafting possible excuses. I'll stop. Answer my question. All right, I'll answer honestly. If I had told you that I was going to steal your betray button, something bad would have happened. But I can't say what. Why can't you? Got it. Why can't you? Gotta reduce variables. Huh? Variables about the vote? The AWI once questioned the, an old great poet uh, as he sat on the bank of Lake Brevity, whiting a spear, eyes on the center of the empty water. The girl you, you investigation suits are after, she rented herself a boat and she ran, rode off. Then a guy who was fin fishing nearby, he rented his own boat and he followed her. As far as I could tell, their boats touched. Huh? She's dead on the lake shore? That's impossible. She rode off in the op opposite direction. Huh. Did you see me as, li uh, as a li liability? Afraid that I would have panicked and spammed the same choice of my own before mix resolved? I know I've been kind of jumpy since we got uh, we got jumped last night, but if you kept me in the dark for your own good, for my own good, or because it's best if I don't know, then that's pretty fucked. You better not say either of those. No, come on, man. I can trust you with anything. It's not that. I just can't tell you what it is. I know it must be hard to trust me. 
Yeah, it it is a little bit. I'm worried that uh gar why is it guardian again? I'm worried that your next plan has already started to shift between ben beneath my feet. Never mind. Maybe I shouldn't say that. I guess I don't have the right to ask what you were going to say. It's been a bit since the AB game came to an end. Guardian and Mimi head to the lower cabins to their uh, to get their bats. Bleh. The eerie soft wind of fabric sliding along metal echoes from the top floor to the train car, refracting down the staircases. Also, I just I, I just thought about it. Since both Guardian and Mimi had prote have protection now, they technically can stand next to each other without problem. Because they got protection. Mimi, my natural awareness tells me that we're being followed. Someone's after the hint? Imp slides down the railing of a spiral sta staircase and lands with his back arced and his head cocked, one eye locked on Guardian. <laughs> he just stands there, in his pose. What do you want, Imp? Mom, do you hear that? From the floor above them on the train, it sounds like wheels ripped up down the hallway. Dust particles shake loose from the ceiling. The girl smells strawberries. Mimi feels a pressure change in the pocket of her workshop overalls. Could that be the monster? See ya! Imp tips his hat and slips back into the railing, cruising on down out of sight. Ah shit. Oh well. Imp slides down toward Dancer. She's coming up from the lower cabins. Oh, perfect. Lucky. I can guess what she's doing down there. He skids to stop in front of her, and she drops her body into a defensive... What is that word? Capoeira? Stance? Juggling her balance between each foot, low to the ground. Hello? Hey, you made that the automaton yet? Who? Dancer stands up. What automaton? Mimi, she isn't alive. Ah. Tank is this. Does he know I overheard the conversation he had with Mimi before the AB game? I better play dumb. Oh, an advert advertisement for the rain uh, black rainbow apparel, centerpieced by a pair of imp twi twins, gesturing devil horns with their sharp tongues out. Okay, so it's pretty much just like, uh, it's pretty much like fanboy stuff, maybe. Three tattoos and piercing on the back. Okay. But her tor torso and head, they aren't mechanical. <laughs> what? They aren't mechanical. Doesn't matter, apparently. Well, he doesn't seem to be lying so far. Anyway, I know I'm an imp, and you have no good reason to believe an imp. But let me offer a little info trade before you begin to regard me as your comp competitor. Just now I searched the Automato's pocket, but she doesn't have a ticket on her person. Not on her mom's person either. There's the info I offer you. Now for your end of the trade. <laughs> what? D uh, did you happen to see a ticket in her bags downstairs? I didn't go through anyone's bags. What are you talking about? Okay. I guess you don't want to 
they don't want to trade information after all. That's too bad. We could have reached a conclusion together. Take it or not, don't attack me. Uh, don't attack Mimi. She's definitely not the tr the last monster. Gotta be alive to have an XP value. And we both heard how valuable the monster is, right? I'm not going to attack anyone. Uh. There we go. Nice. Even that much should be, be good enough. I'm out of here. Okay. See ya. Imp tries to slide away, but Dancer grabs his arm. Hmm. Hey, let go. Let's be allies first. And then I'll consider the possibility of your statesman the statements being true. All I need from you is your class badge. Would you please show me your your badge before you slide away? Fuck no. <laughs> Imp rests his arm away and fixes one of his traps on his wrist, twisting it back and forth slowly into two sharp claws. I got it. Damn, that was a combo. My signature gimmick will only keep working for today and tomorrow. Once I show everyone my class, it'll be so much harder to uh, uh, harder run schemes. He relaxes his pose and slid down the rail. One inch per second, his legs crossed. Sue told me that uh, told me you presented uh, pressed him too. I can understand craving information about who has what abilities. But is checking badges an e uh, the even an effective way to get that info? Knowing my class type only gives you a rough understanding of what I can do. There are so many classes in the game and so many builds you can make. That can't be why you're hunting people down one by one and cornering them politely, uh, cornering them politely like this. But why then? The only other information you can get from a class badge is the user's level. So you must be hunting for badges. That have a low XP value, huh? People who likely can't fight back? Wow, that's pretty fucked. Is he accusing Dancer of being the... I do have my suspicions on Dancer. I still don't know who could be, but... Huh. Dancer steps silently down the staircase so she can keep talking to Imp as he slides uh, away faster and faster. That's not true. So this is the horror of deductive reasoning. She said the word, deductive reasoning. We're doing Danganronpa now. Damn. I'm searching for high XP values. It would soothe my anxiety to make some strong allies. If you don't want to show me your badge, that's okay. If you want to form an alliance before then, you know what you have to do. Just be patient and wait until tomorrow night. Imp is almost out of the view now. Do you really think we'll go that long without a death? Holy fuck, I regret trying to befriend you. Work up a little bit, will ya? We'll be fine. Everybody's gonna be fine. Don't ever touch me again or I'll kill you. See you at dinner, dancer. Im kicks off a stair and poofs around the corner, uh, around the corner at full speed, his hat bluttering down the bend. In the dining cabin, Tank and Pet feast on a granol, uh, on granola cubes in each other's company, starved from stress. Hey, don't let the conversation die. Tell me more about this ability you got, sense threats. Let's get uh, con concerned about this high uh, absolute bleh, 
high altitude clownsure we're locked up in. Now, more than ever, we gotta know who to watch out for. The AB game. Tank, I'm... No, I'm... I'm done stepping down my own buttons and freaking out over nothing. That ain't me anymore. Let's focus it up and play. So, what's the range of this bitch? Cast time? Cooldown? Is she ca uh, channeled? Does she got charges? Does she come out of the st uh, of stance? I'm sorry, I'm trying to... Uh, I'm sorry about trying to press betray on in the final round. Stay on topic. Tell me all about sense threats, alright? Here's a little platy. Tank hold, uh, hands him a platino, platinum granola cube. Thanks, pet. Uh, tank, my... <laughs> yeah, my brain is getting so confused. My bad. Seriously. Sorry. Pet uh, gnums into it while he talks. Yeah. Sense threats is like... Stay oh, the safety locket. The locket that uh, that Mimi has is spreading from all damage within five meters of their guardian. Ah, that's why the their their secret rule is to not be together, to stay away from each other. Because if they are close to each other, then no one can ever hurt Mimi. That's why. It's an AoE, uh, AoE ability. That means area of effect. Like an invisible harmless bomb, it hits every available targets in a big sphere around me. I fucking know what AoE means. Everyone knows that. Well, the rest of it is, uh, of it is like... Sense threats, ability, cast time X, cooldown varies, range varies. X is a value determined by the user. Description. For each location and range, I'll put an adjective describing the harmful intent found in any brains they are in the harmful abilities found in any class, uh, badges there. For each increment of 10 seconds you spend casting this ability, range and cooldown will increase exponentially. I used it once at the start of the game, and I remember the readings. Gambling cabin, no threat. Leaf cabin, middling threat. Lower cabin, reactive threat. Upping, upper tre bleh, cabin, high threat. Conductor's Cabin, No Threat, and Cherry Cabin, Meteoric Threat. Oh, yeah, that's good. Keep listening, shit. You're looking less pale already. Pet, uh, my god. Tank pet uh, keeps pet occupied with conversation for a while. Eventually, they both end up in the lounge, on the lounge chair. Pet in Tank's lap. That little speech I made this afternoon. Yeah, sorry I s asked you uh, that about uh, that of you back in the final round. It's all right. I'm sorry I was so co uh, cowardly. I should have just aligned you. I felt so stupid when I found out that we both had protection already from our double accidental uh, double ally in the first round. I wish we both, uh, both as keen as them blue ga guys, but pet, I mean, I was forcing you to put your life on the line right after that debacle at, uh, at departure. Yeah, my guy, buddy, I gotta admit, uh, that was pushing it, even for me. Thanks for saying that, Tank, but, you know, I was pushing it too. We're back. The girls return from the lower cabin. Mimi clunks up to Pet and gives him uh, his little bag, which she picked up alongside her own. Welcome back now. Here you go, Pet. Oh, thanks. Can you please throw that in the cupboard uh, over in the kitchen? Think made me uh, made me a little bed up there. Welcome back. Hell, yup. 
Watch your mouth. <laughs> Sorry, Mom. I was just so pleased that nobody died in the first game. Also, I've, uh, since you maybe missed it, I found out why Mimi and Guardian can't stay with each other or why Dead Ghost made them sep get separated with each other. It's because if the Guardian is within 5 meters of the locket, the wearer is protected from all damage. So basically no one can hurt Mimi as long as Guardian is nearby. So that's why Dead Ghost made them separate each other. Uh, Mimi disappears in the uh, in the, the kitchen. Guardian drops into one of her the distant lounge chairs in the foggy blue lit dining cabin. How's the weather over there, lady? Guardian cuts a severe, obscured figure in the noon haze. Legs crossed, elbow on the armrest. Ever since the final round, it's been foggy. I need your assistance promptly, you two. And it's a matter of basic maintenance, such that my daughter can return her dignity, uh, retain her dignity in this hell above the cloud. I'm tired of all of you people pretending like Mimi and I are not se severely more impacted by our Mini rule than everyone else. Come on. I got it. My rule is way worse than yours. Right, I forgot. We also don't know tanks, menu rule. There's a lot of people we don't know the menu rules, actually. You little animal. Do you have any experience with machines? Yeah. I was sniffing around uh, for the fuse box at the front of the train just uh, before I died. Lend us your child paws, won't you? My little star needs a tune-up. Mimi pops her head around the kitchen door frame. I would actually like your help. We don't trust anyone else but you, pet. Don't put my word. Uh, don't put words in my maw, Mimi. I merely distrust him the least. Of course you do. God damn it! Come on, I'm I, I'm I, I'm I'm not gaming correctly. I would do it for you, but my bottoms aren't a possible. Tank, could uh, could you do it while I guided you? I mean, all right, I guess. Don't blame me if I fuck this up, all right? What do you mean tune up anyway? You just have to tighten the screws on the back of my elbows and knees. And also there's some key codes you have to input on this panel. We're not sure if they're strictly necessary, but if we don't do it, it I get fits of amnesia. Also, there are some points of detachment that need uh, recalibration, including the X on my, bra uh, of m on my brow and another thing. Tank and Pet aren't listening. Whoops. Tank cocks an eyebrow brow at Pet and jerks his head, offering something, separately in indicating Mimi. Pet, what if I got the hint for you? Would you trust me then? Healer's got a name tab buried uh, deep in his bag. It's silver steel pin caught in the fabric. Hi, my name is Philian. Ask about our stamina potions. So, is Healer's real name Philian? Pet has great fires of determination blazing in his little eyes. He baits a paw in Mimi's direction to signal curiosity. If anyone can get that int out of Imi uh, Mimi, it's us. We'd be at huge advantage. And that means... Life. That means staying alive. It's all coming down t onto me uh, now. In a situation like this, Tank, 
healer and the officiary. They aren't just counting on me to stay out of trouble and play it safe. They're counting on me to raise my own chances of survival by taking actions, by making plays. Tank nods knowingly. It, are they going to plan something up now? Looks like he's game, even. I never seen him. Bleh, I never seen him so fired up. Of course, I don't need to the hint for the information, but if I shared it with you, chef and healer, we could all squat up real fucking tight. Tank break breaks eye contact. There we go. I ain't even trying to win anyway, at the end of the day. And I guess if you want, you could straighten the prongs on my tail charger. Oh, I could probably do that myself, but mum usually... A gas lamp beside the lounge chairs begins to sputter out. Tank and Pet lean forward earnestly. Yeah, we can do all that. Tank, is your maintenance guy from now... Uh, yeah. Yeah, Tank is your maintenance guy from now on, right? Yep, you're, uh, yep, you're dead right. I'm fucking, I'm the fucking handyman, let's go. This sounds like a little time consuming though, I gotta ask. Can't you guys give us something in return? Uh, I don't know. The gas lamp goes dead. Tank. Pet. I can see you're squarely con 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 convining expression from over here, you bozos. What do you mean, Mom? Guardian strikes a match of her uh, on her hip and holds it to the lamp. The flame breathes up again, cutting through the noon fog and illuminate her bitter expression from below. And they are not. It's clear they're trying to get our, uh, get, uh, get at our hint, Mimi. Personally, I was concerned with how much the hint refers to the smallness and yellowness of the monster. It was quite descriptive. Wow. She's fucking lying. But mom, we didn't even- we don't even have- Mimi, please hush up. Let me guide the conversation for us. Don't speak unless I've instructed you to speak. You can corroborate my statements instead of bumbling around trying to come up with any of your own. Yep, Guardian is a Karen. Yes, Mom. Tank slams his fist on the table. Hey, quit fucking shit uh, saying shit like that. Tank brushes a palm over the table and checks for splinters. Sorry, pet. But Guardian, you got uh, you ought to quit uh, treating her like that, huh? I don't wait. I don't know how I sh could read this. Altania. That is. I can't comprehend this word. Kid, you fucking talk however much uh, however much you want to talk. Stop letting this bitch shut you down and boss you around all up and down the fucking trans cabin walkway. Guardian bristles. Tank puts his paws up. Sorry, alright. I know you're both people. Nobody's perfect. It ain't my place to judge family matters like that. Just wanted to throw out there. Uh. Fuck. If I want to. Yeah, if I want that hint, I gotta be nicer. Guardian opens her mouth and raises a finger, but she doesn't snap back at him. Mimi, what did you uh, what did you say before she cut you up? You say said something like we don't have. What do you mean to say we don't have the hint yet? Is that milk? A dead crystal. It's not milk. A blood crystal. Huh. Yeah, I did. That ghost only told us the monster is a XXXX, some four letter word that doesn't start with a vowel. 
He'll only reveal the word if mom and I separate for real. Like, being in separate rooms, even. Uh, please try not to share your mini rule because you can't reveal your mini rule. You gotta separate for how long then? Till midnight, right? Protection went up earlier uh, this afternoon, and if uh, and Mimi won twelve hours of it, just like us. We are not separated. Se separating. We have not decided on uh, that yet. Uh, we have not decided that yet. You really should. I think you two should give it a shot, at least. Your chemistry right now is awful. You just want to get my daughter alone so you can pry the hint out of her. Uh, she already said the hint. Kind of just pointless now. They, they kind of already know the hint. Ish. The only thing they don't know is what four-letter word it is. They basically know what they already know. She won't even get the hint till midnight though, yeah? Yeah. Tank forgot to say that we don't even want it anyway too. That's right, yep. <laughs> Mimi looks at her mom, her eyes hopeful. Mom. She waits for a moment, expecting to be shut down, but... Mom, I do think... I do think that it would be good for us to spend a little time apart. She pokes her fingers together and looks at the floor. Sorry. N never mind. I didn't mean that in a cruel way. You know, it's just... Fine. Guardian gets up and pushes her lounge chair neatly against the wall. Whatever. Fine. I'll leave right now. Tank. Pet. Take care of my daughter for me. She heads for the exit. W wait You're really going to let me be on my own? Yes. During the final round of the AB game, I suffered a stress-induced hallucination. And I realized how I must be suffocating you with, well, the way that I am. It's clear that everyone else has realized it too. I hope, I, I hope not. I hope it's Guardian that is gonna die. Not Mimi. Mimi is fine. Mom. Alright, enough talking. Here I go. Guardian's big boots clunk out into the hallway, her fits crushed shut. She only gets a few st uh, steps away before she comes running back, clunk, 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 and just juts her head around the side of her uh, of the that door frame, her hair f falling over one teary wide eye. Mimi, make smart decisions. Don't be honest or open with you. Uh, with your information until I'm back at your side again. Or as near to it as I'll be able to stay for the next 11 days. Even if you call me, uh, call for my help, I won't come to save you. Even if you beg for me to return to you. E even, even if another game starts. I'll stay away from you. I promise my falling star. I will earn the hint, find the monster, and get us out of here safely. I'll win this death game in 12 short hours. Okay. Guardian throws out a peace sign. Uh-huh. Okay. Thank you, Mom. Thank you for trusting me to look after myself. I'll take this time to meet the others properly and gather up information about everyone here. I'll show you what I can really do. Before she actually leaves, Guardians runs back and talks to Mimi desperately for another 15 minutes. Where's your safety locket? Uh, I think I dropped it between the train cars on our way back from the lower cabins, but I'll be okay without it now. You think? 
Mimi sits comfortably on the lounge chair next to a satchel of quick fix tools that Guardian left with her. I lose. I wait, I got it? I better not fuck this up. Bet stands on the, his hind legs and squints to inspect the closed panel on the back of Mimi's neck. Temp co uh, Tank compares the two screw drivers, already panicking. You said you, we have to key in something in, Mimi. Yeah, you gotta key in 105330. Okay. Tank focuses hard, his brow all in the gnarl. He delicated, uh, de delicately unscrews the panel. He keys the code in. Beep. Oh. <laughs> Mimi goes quiet. Bing. Perfect. Ah, this feels a lot better. Thank you. Well, yeah, was fucking easy. No sweat. Good job, Tank. Pet places a paw on Tank's big shoe. It's a bit unstable to pet uh, to to the touch. Mimi pops the pops the hood. A big chunky door on her back swings open, open to reveal star-shaped gears, glowing rune right wires, knobs, levers, connectors, valves. Whoa, that's a lot of rune voltage warnings. Mimi, you're weird. These uh, warnings are writ written in at least three different languages. Lilish, common tongue. Uh, Semitic, 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 tree? Really? Thanks. How do you sit comfortably with all that shit rattling around in your spinal? I don't know. What's the big le red lever here, pet? Ah, uh, thank. Th uh, that's probably a B valve. Don't touch that. She'll drop straight to the ground. Tank yoinks his hand away like he touched a hot stove. How many more things we gotta tune here? I think the only thing left is the blue screw that's always loose, but we don't have the tools for that in mom's cute satchel. Uh, satchel. She usually uses a coin. Um, A coin? Well, here, I got one. Last payday the boys gave me all these shitty old coins though. This one don't even look yellow anymore. Wow, you really are in handy, Tank. That's one of the old grey metal coins from the 18th century. They're always rising up uh, from the mud after a long, a good long rainstorm. Will it fit, fit the screw groove, the pet? Look good to me. Pet clicks the little disc of grey metal in place. Click. It begins to tight. Uh, he begins to tighten the screw. Slowly, he rotates the coin. One revolu revolution, two revolutions. But the instant the screw becomes tight, uh, Tank's claws slip and overturns it. Uh oh. <laughs> Mimi almost almost falls over. Ah shit! Sorry, sorry. The coin pops loose from Tank's claws. It drops into the machinery, clinking and clunking on the way down. Tank, I thought you said you were done stepping your own buttons. God damn it, I was doing it so well. Uh oh. Mimi's mind reboots to a moment ago. Wow, you really are handy, Tank. Oh, where did the little coin go? Are you finished already? You're fast, too, for someone of your weight. What does that supposed to mean? I mean, that's not that you're fat or anything. You're uh, actually, you're pretty strong. It looks like not that you're strong or anything. I'm not implying you're dangerous or suspiciously strong. I know you have a weight problem with your muscles being too big and you being so fat and he's not even fat. Why people keep saying that Tank is fat? He's not even fat, he's muscly. Mimi covers her face. Sorry, saying you're strong makes you sound like the monster. 
What? Did did I say something weird? Yeah, see, he he's not even fat. He, he he's thin. He's thin. Nah, shut the fuck up. You're fine. That it then? Y you all torqued up up good? Good enough? Tank stands up and brushes his knees off super casually. Yep, I feel minty fresh. Thanks so much, guys. Sure. <laughs> I don't believe it, though, but sure. Tanks is fat. <laughs> Mimi hops off the lounge chair and do some exercise stretches. Tank and Pet uh, take a huddle. Hey, Pet. I don't think she remembers what happened. It's probably fine. She really seems like... Uh, s seems to like us. She'll understand it was just an accident. I hope. Pet. We should probably tell Guardian about this, shouldn't we? Mimi tests her points of detachment for w wobbliness or bad connections. Loody do day day. Please put your head back on. Thank you. No, please. Please stop removing it. Should we? Uh, sh should we really give Guardian another reason to worry uh, over her just because you dropped a little coin in the rig? Hmm. I guess you're right. She's built tough anyway. What kind of harm could a loose coin even do? Let's make, le head back to Leaf Cabin and solicit my goddamn sandwiches I've been owed from Chef. Here's one for you, bud. Hey, do you want to go to the Blackout Guardian after this? I want to pick some clover flowers for Healer as thanks for saving you, pet. Give that extra sandwich to Mimi. That'll be uh, better for our end game. Fucking right. Here, and polish off the last of my granola for me. I'm kind of full, but sure, I'll eat some more. Pet crunches up the granola and flops down to his side, his tail flicking up a spacey, relaxed rhythm. Mm, yum, yum. Oh, Pet! Mimi points to the table beneath him. What's with that weird mark under your back paw? Pet lifts his leg and peeks at the symbol I carved there two seconds ago. Huh? Oh, dunno. Kinda looks like an X. That's weird. Oh, is that part of the next game? Pet is in danger. Pet is in danger. Oh no. That ghost makes his, pe uh, his special announcement. Attention all passengers. You ever enter a room in your house that wasn't here uh, there before? You ever feel through, uh, fall through the floor into a hallway with no doors or windows? Have you ever gotten to the back rooms? <laughs> you ever got lost in the closet, bro? If so, then you've triggered a pitfall. Three pitfalls have now happened on the train. X marks the spot. Watch your step and don't fall in, or else you'll be stuck without food and water for a very long time. Is that... Is that... his next game? Is that part of his next game? Wait, what marks the spot? A or X? Pit triggers the pitfall with his back paw. Uh oh. Uh oh. Wild space open below Pit and he tumbles down into an escape room with no doors or windows. The walls are covered in analog puzzles. Tank and Mimi shout down to him, but the ceiling refuses to shut. Uh, re uh, no, fuses shut and cuts off their voices immediately. Uh oh. Pet lands feet first, and his tiny body absorbs the shock with ease. That ghost seeps through the wall. <laughs> hey, I need to talk to you, bud. Pet doesn't quiver. Please stop trying to jump scare me. 
I won't show fear. Not uh, not now that Tank helped me beat your silly game. My resolve has increased since then. I think about that. This isn't the punishment or a trick. It's an apology. I'm sorry for making you play the AB game while your brain was still recovering from death. Huh? It clearly affected your decision making, though. That wasn't fair for of me. You aren't showing remorse, are you? It's not like I'm sorry for killing you at all. But if you want, you can stay here in this pit pit pitfall, separated from the other passengers for 24 hours. That's when I kick you out. It's extra protection at the cost of the thirst and hunger. I promise, promise no one can get in. If you want out, though, you gotta seek a way out. Solve all my da uh, dastardly puzzles. And find the exit. Fuck you still. <laughs> Dead ghost over uh, hover phases up into the ceiling of the room like a heat mir mirage over the hot pavement. Got it. I'm good at these. Shit, all those puzzles are too big for his paws. Uh, I can't do anything right. Fuck me. <laughs> well, Pet is stuck there. Shh, see that shit? This is exactly what, what I was fucking telling him about last night. I saw, I saw. Keep up, we gotta warn the boys. Mimi wipes away tears as they run up on the leaf cabin where Chef and Healer stand outside in the walkway far apart. Dead ghost arises through the floor. Ha <laughs> I fucking got him good. The little bitch is so trapped right now. Heals. X marks the spot, not A. <laughs> Tank elbows dead ghost out of the way. Uh. We're just looking for you, Tank. Guys. Trapped his dumb ass. <laughs> Dude, please shut the fuck up. You're laughing right in my ear. <laughs> Tank Mimi, I'm pretty sure the pitfalls are in high traffic areas like the walkway or the dining cabin. Somewhere easily triggered by accident. Yeah, you're right on that one. Healer! The table! It- The table swallowed pets! <laughs> Maybe later on. I, I don't know if it would taste good, or can you even cook a ghost? That's a weird question to ask. Mimi runs crying and sh uh, shaking into Healer's arms. Healer comforts her. Oh no, he really can't catch a break, can he? Healer tears up a bit too. But Tank claps them both on the back, rattling the machinery inside Mimi and making Healer squeak and blush. Quit blubbering, you will you? It's pointless to pan panic like that. Cause pet's gonna be just fine. Thanks to my hearty good earnest strategy, pet had a snack in his mouth when he got sucked into the right dining room gr grand table. Fucking guy's set for three days minimum if he rations. You gotta remember, he's smaller than us, so he can survive survive for longer uh, for longer on less. Good work, Tank. From the moment those holes show, uh, sh showed up during the blackout, I figured the topology of this train train would become our enemy. Uh, I think you can survive without water for a week, I believe? I think? Possibly. Healer, did you get enough to eat? Chef con conjures a sandwich. See, he can just... Pops out like food out of nowhere because he's a chef. I wish I could do that. Where's mine? Here. Thanks. Chef guides Healer by the wrist and walks him back down the hall towards the leaf cabin. We 
only came out of here to warn you about the common areas thing. So now that you're good, we should probably uh, shift triggers a rope uh, rope trip water fixed at the ankle height across the walkway. His paw reflexively tightens around healers. Both of them fall. Uh oh. A complex Rube Golder, uh, Goldberg machine fires off and releases a length of barbed wire which unravels with a whiply high-pitched whine. Attached at the end, there is a huge bloody axe which swings down towards healer scope. They have protection, right? They have protection, right? Below them, about 15 minutes ago, I carved a big X into the steel floor panels. They're about to land on it right now, uh, right on it. I knew that would be a good spot for a pitfall. Oh, dude, double jeopardy. Healer! Get back. Get back, kid. Tank uses the redirect. Target healer. After 3 second delay, all targeted abilities and all physical damage done to healer will be transferred directly uh, transfer entirely to tank. I feel like t tank, I think you've just made a bad move. I think you just uh, made a bad move. Healer still had protection. Healer would have been fine. But tank doesn't have protection anymore. But before we direct and resolve, <sighs> that goes rolls for Indetin with 99 point. Oh no. Oh no. He's planning to kill someone, is he? Oh no. Something's gonna happen. Oh no. I'm scared. Oh no. Oh no. Dead Ghost uses Indetin. Spectral chains expose from his body and lock the axe in place an inch away from healer's snout. Yeah, okay, exactly. Healer still has the protection. Yeah, because healers still have the protection from the AB game. Okay, good. Phew, a total of zero physical damage has been transferred to tank. You just have been protected from death. But good effort, tank. Healer sniffs the axe frozen in front of his snout. This axe smells like my blood. Chef, isn't it the one from last night? I'm not the only one setting traps, huh? I I'm the only one setting traps. Anyway, looks like you, ju you two just fell down into a pitfall. Nah. Before they fell onto the X on the floor, Chef uses Mix to fuse his jacket sleeve to the wall and halt their momentum. Healer hangs from his waist and Chef hangs from his own sleeve. Man, again, for Chef being a non-combat class, his Mix ability sure is freaking handy. The fabric is starting to rip. You wouldn't think that, like, a sh chef ability would be that useful. He had to make an attempt. Tank's shoes are riddle riddled with debuff cast by a captain. One of them is lockstep. The wearer is unable to walk into a casino. There is no debuff, like, these shoes must be equipped permanently, though. Oh. Huh. Interesting. So Tank just cannot go into his casinos. Tank, get him! I got him. Tank runs up and tries to grab both, uh, both of them. Chef makes eye contact with Tank. And Chef cancel- and then Chef cancels Mix. You really are a good guy, Tank. Sorry, but I gotta take this extra protection for us, no matter what. Chef and healer tumble on the floor, uh, to the floor, trigger, uh, trigger the pitfall. 
and the X pops open, and again they drop. Chef barrel uh, barrel rolls to cushion healers landing with his own body, their ears and tails whipping around in the air. Chef throws tank uh, his sandwiches. Tell him, it might be your last chance, tank. The pitfall begins to close. Begins to close. Okay, for this point, I kind of see why Chef did that. Chef and Healer are going to both be in the pitfall, in a room that they will stay there for 24 hours. One of Chef's abilities is to conjure food out of nothing. So with Chef with, uh, being with Healer down there, they will have food. And drink. So they will be able to stay safe down here. Without any repercussion. And no one can get to them. So they will be safe down there. I think that's what Chef is thinking there. That with his ability to conjure up food at any point. They can just survive down there. That's what I'm thinking. Tank jams his fingers in the X-shaped seam and rips the pitfall back open with the raw power of his bare paws. Heals! His voice booms, rattling the puzzles all over the walls. I threw the axe last night. Unreli- what? Oh. Shit. <laughs> Oh god. And if it's gonna be too a uh, to uh please don't do that for like love exalt because like I need I don't know what I'm gonna do for the audio. <laughs> oh dear, okay. We'll see, we'll see. I I will keep up the promise though, <laughs> if you go and manage to get there. I'm surprised how how did I made it? Ten thousand points, yeah. You saved up that much, that many points, huh? I'm with the lumberjacks. I'm fucking sorry. Chef and healer hit the floor with a furry tud. The X seals shut and tanks disappears. Good merry weather. Suit suit sits at the window in the upper cabin, sipping afternoon tea with the officiary as an aeronaut hot air balloon bobs through the distant sun rays. I just divulged my admiration of your bravery, Miss Fishery. I, in sending that radio message when you were trapped in the front cabin, and you're telling me now that your cry for help may have been categor categoric word rejecti? rejected? My god, I cannot speak today. Fuck. I failed to declare myself as the stand-in conductor, so it won't be considered as a, a a real emergency call. Thank you very much for confiding your mistake in me, mistakes in me, but they would truly disregard such a panic message. Do they not perform regular ra radio checks with the conductor and sound the alarm the moment he returns their call with not more than pitch black static? Our policies failed to account for a situation like this. That does vex me. It's almost as if, as if they are allowed this to this by design. <clears throat> the train, the train company. You think, uh, you think Abattoir let this happen on purpose? I doubt it sincerely. It's not that our policies are designed to allow hi a hijacking. It's that, so far, a change in policy has never been required. Ah. The method by which the rail prevents these situations. It's me. It's the fisheries and our sig signature, signature, um, signature ability order. The ability to restrict the behavior. Years of passengers using precise, pro uh, prosaic, and inalienable commands. 
We're overpowered, giving the right level of intelligence. That's why our emergency policies have never had a stress like a trust test like this. Suit avoids eye contact, unsure what to say. Cool. The officiary snaps at him, sparks of hate scattered aimlessly in her eyes. What are you going to say next? Be honest with me, don't sugarcoat it. You blame me for this, don't you? If you don't, then you should. We're beating- uh, you're beating your- yeah, you're beating yourself too much, my dear. Do chin, chin up and look forward. Dwelling our mistakes is only as useful as the solutions we can dredge from the- those bes- uh, besmudge guilty memories. Don't- don't worry about it. Don't worry, it'll be okay. The officiary turns her attention back to her textbook. Of course it will. Thank you, suit. A moment passes. Appreci I appreciate you staying with me. Come on. Yeah, I got it. Good. Well, I only sought you out because Imp inexplicably ran out, babbling about some 13th sailor gambit. It'd be a great, uh, a great deal more afraid if I had to wander the train by myself at this time. Then Sir Noel and I are at severe disadvantage. Dash it. Got it. Got it. But by choosing Dead Ghost as my partner and betraying him, at least I can say I tried my best to kill him. I wonder what would have happened if he had allied me in the final round. I'm sure he would have died as the rules demand, but for how long he would have stayed dead? Long enough for us to try something, perhaps? I doubt. I doubt. Suit. Let's attend dinner in the dining cabin together in a few hours. Accompany me there too, won't you? I would be on honor to do so. Shall we read until then? Have you got your textbook? Yes. And you your case file? Always, ma'am. Always. Well then, let's tuck in for a few hours. Pet tries to solve the pitfalls wall puzzles up on his hind legs. His paw fumble over a colored keypad. He's trying to input the code he found by tearing a piece of wallpaper of off with his teeth to reveal a hidden cipher ta table, which could be only uh, be decoded by first solving the pu push block puzzle covered by a heavy rug that took him 20 minutes to move. Even with all of his strength maxed out, uh, to the absolute limit, but now, after all that, his paws can barely generate enough force to press the keys on the keypad down. Even when he does uh, get a key press in, he ends up hitting two other keys by accident. He's losing energy. Unfair, huh? You admit it was unfair to force me into the AB game with a foggy brain. But do you want me to solve puzzles that I can barely even reach if I want out? That goes to you. Another coin. Oh. Yeah, we are. We're getting more information. You really are a complete piece of shit. <laughs> oh my. I mean. Pet deserves to say that at this point. I mean, Dead Ghost played him dirty from the beginning. Oh, I shouldn't even. Uh, I shouldn't even think bad words like that. Master would hate me. Yeah. Pet is right. Pet slides down the ho the wall and lays on his belly. Master, reprimand me and snap snap your fingers and whistle for me to get to my feet again. 
He heaves bread into the carpet and gathers his energy. Master, tell me I've done a good job and urge me to rest. Let me curl up in, uh, curl up in your lap. In Suit's pocket, next to his heart, he keeps a photo of, well, a li li uh, Lillian girl. She's got a clean circle, gla uh, circle glass glasses, long unkept hair, and a terrible po posture. Ah, interesting suit. He braces his hang legs against the floor. He tries to strain up to reach the keypad again. Master, please just... Just be with me again. He can't do it. Pet curls up into a little ball. Tank. I can count on you to protect Healer and Mimi, right? Maybe you won't be too mad at me if I just take another nap. Chef holds a paw, uh, paw alt palm out, beacon, uh, be beaconing Healer. Sauce me that key we got from the safe in the wall with the gay riddle on it. We don't have to get up. What? Healer sits in the corner with a paw roaming under the back of his shirt. Tank is with the lumberjacks. Hey, Cricket. Hooks me the key. Healer tosses the key. The paw under his shirt bumps against his bandages. Tank gave me this wound. Tank chased out of the yard forest and onto this train. Him and his friends, yeah. As we fell in there, you said, tell him, so you already knew? Chef plugs the key into a lockbox and twists. Tank let it slip during the blackout. The, pop the box pops open. Inside there's a hidden tablet carved up with letters and numbers in a grid. How did you re react? S Chef smirks over his shoulder. I attacked him instantly. I used your old uh, hot soup and sticky shoe streak. I was wondering how he got covered in soup. Chef, you're kind of cool sometimes, you know that? Nah, man. It didn't even do anything. His passive protected him. Funny enough, I think it's called... Big guy, <laughs> you are 90% resistant to physical damage, but you take 90% more emotional, psychologi uh, psychological, and self-inflicted damage. So, Tank's weakness is emotional damage. Huh. Funny. That's fucking... That's completely unbalanced. 90% resistant? Why is that in the game? I know, right? We stand zero chance against him. Even in a 2v1. And that is a dancer. I'm glad he's always on our side, no matter what happens. Chef licks a claw and drags lines of wet logic across the grid tablet as he connects in inscrutable dots. Hey, healer. Thanks. I didn't tell you about Tank, but you're not mad at me. Yeah, you're fine. Thank you. He wanted to apologize to you from his own ma, to keep his pride as a man intact or whatever. I guess it's kind of thing he felt like he had to do himself. It's fine that you didn't tell me. It was his responsibility. Not like he's going to try and kill me again anyway. He promised to protect us. We just sealed the deal with those sandwiches. We need every source of protection we can get in here. Chef smirks. You still trust- uh, so you still trust him then? I've always trusted him. Love at first sight, eh? Please don't- don't leave me for him. He's not gay, if you were wondering. <laughs> In case that you were, uh, in case that you were uh, considering him, <laughs> Healer relaxes against the wall. His legs uh, spill out to the side. 
He excels pouting and pokes a uh, floor puzzle with one claw. Shit. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> but he doesn't seem like the insecure guy. Shift looks down at Healer, hands in his pocket. I'll never understand why you like Muscle Dude so much. Ah. That is why. It's his personality, more like. Forceful type, I guess. Am I forceful? <laughs> in a way. Move over. <laughs> what are they going to do? Chef scooches in and scooches Healer deeper into the corner. His skinny jeans brush against Healer fishnets and stockings. Hey, fuck off. Get your own spot. Can we take a break from this escape room shit for a second and cuddle? Aw. Yeah, go, go wild on me. But don't kiss me because we'll die. Chef nuzzles his fuzzy cheek into Healer's face, careful not to keep his, uh, t careful to keep his lips out of the equation. <sighs> Sick of puzzles just after a couple of uh, after just a couple of hours. <sighs> you know I could never get sick of puzzles. It's just that I'd rather uh, I'd rather we stay in here where it's safe. Maybe not for the full 24, but, you know. You really aren't mad that I kept this from you? Last night, I even apologized for trying to kick Tank out of the leaf cabin. Even though I knew I wasn't in the wrong for suspecting him. I just wanted to, uh, wanted to help him keep his cover up until he was ready to tell you, I guess. And man, this sounds... Uh, that uh, this sounds kind of psychotic now that I'm saying it out loud. Do I uh, do I scheme like that too much? Jeez, Chef, you're showing a lot of vulnerability all of a sudden. Yeah, I guess I am. So, Healer sh grabs Chef by the chin and aims a shrewd, hard. P uh, pierced gaze right into his eyes at point-blank range. I like that. You should do it more often. Chef jerks away. Like about the AB game? Yeah, I get it. Healer steers Chef's face back towards his own. His claws brush soft against Chef's bare throat. You know, I wasn't trying to, uh, to imply that. Sorry, of course you weren't. You'd never drop a little shit-eating hint like that. Whatever reason you have to keep this from me, it's got nothing to do with vulner vulnerability, does it? You're right. It doesn't. I don't know how else to put it. I just seriously couldn't tell you. Or else something bad would have happened. It's too much. I couldn't tell you. I can't tell you. Healer pushes him in and bites his neck. Half playful, half fist. <sighs> Ow. <laughs> Are they into it? Is he into that? Jeff, I'm going to say uh, what I stopped myself from saying earlier, but uh, in a bit of a nicer way. Promise you'll tell me uh, about all of your plans from now on. Especially when I'm a moving piece in your contraption. Okay? Do you promise? Mmm. This is tense. The early winter sun sets lazily outside of the dining cabin window as most passengers gather for dinner time. Where's, uh, where the devil is everyone? Is this all we've got? Imp and the officiary sits as far as possible from each other. Suit and uh, heads the grand table. Dancer and Noel are too cool to eat with the tri trio. They're off in the corner of the room by the lounge chairs again. Doing some weird silent shit with each other. That's everyone. Maybe all the weak players died already. Hmm. Here comes two more, it sounds like. 
think jogs in. Mimi chase after him. The hallway, uh, the walkway sunset shadows at her heels. Slow down, oh my gosh, Tank, you're too fast. Then seconds ago, you were saying that I'm fat and slow. Fucking up, uh, fucking make, your, uh, make up your mind. Am I fat or I'm not? Ooh, I barely got it. Well, I guess it ain't her fault though. It's my fucking lousy dad's fault. That's the point of going for a run anyway. You gotta push yourself. Tank bites into one of Chef's delicious peanut butter and jelly sandwiches, throws one to Mimi, grabs a chair and, with a man grunt of relief, he slams himself in on down onto it. Kung Kung King, his dirty dress uh, shows uh, shoes up on the table. The double impact rattles all the neatly set dishes and sputters the gas lamps. The officiary tightens her brow. I won't boss anyone around. I won't boss anyone around. Not even when their action directly contradicts with the, the hygiene policy. Not even then. <laughs> Those are a very nice pair of Oxfords you have, Tank. I'm lucky to have the, to get such a close look at them. Thanks. They're hiking boots, actually. Mimi uh, eats her sandwich hurriedly, looking around the dusk-lit room. Where's mom? I saw her in there the walkway earlier. As did Sud and I, she refused the invitation to join my dining experience, and I insisted upon eating, uh, upon eating by herself tonight. And in her usual way, she asked me nicely to look after you, Mimi. It seems Tank is already on the job, though. Yeah. I see. I see. Right. She's staying far away so we can earn the hint at midnight. Phew. Okay. I dropped that pretty casually, didn't I? Now we shouldn't get targeted because everyone just heard we don't have the hint yet. Yes. Good job, Mimi. You did it. Are you sure you should have just said that shit out loud? Isn't it better to push her about uh, how you already know who the monster is and buff up your chest, uh, chest and shit? Impa has a history of monsters textbook in his bag, worn to shit and riddled by doodles of himself with cool piece piercings with ro ram horns. With the big fluffy tails. There are doodles of perp of a purple imp too, but only in the earlier chapters. That is weird pi pictures. My voice is getting tired a bit. Hey guys, how how what what do you want? Uh, what do you think of my mom? Of course, from looking at us, you can tell we're not actually related. But what do you think of Guardian? A couple glances glances go around. <sighs> I'll be right back. The officer heads into the kitchen. I dislike Guardian outright. She's a uh, she's a lively character indeed. Sure. I love her. She's so confident, uh, confident, and proactive. Her wound fascinates fascinates me, and you fascinates me by talking. Oh my god, this this one is rough. Wow. Oh no, we're not doing this again. We're not doing this again, are we? Uh, this is bad. We're doing this again. Oh no. List of languages on Mimi's interior's warning labels. Common tongue, Lilish, Symmetric, Daymort. And a few more. Oh no, another fishing one.
Okay, I got it. <laughs> yeah, we're doing this again. I recognize its ir iridescent color. Uh, this is Guardian. Oh my god. Got it. Please. I got it. Oof. Oof. Okay. I got scared. Her blood has been poisoned by a plant. Huh. Okay. So, she's toxic. Literally. Funny. I fucking hate the bitch. I'll be honest, I can't stand her. <laughs> Tank is so honest there. She wasn't always like that, you know. I only ask because we've never been separated like this. It's the first time we I've ever had the chance. Never mind. She wouldn't want me to uh, overshare. The officiary wheels out the dining trolley. It's loaded with silver and cobalt, uh, cobalt plates of wood fire roasted, sea salted meats, hearty winter vegetables, cleanly Paired rachaka fruit, chunky cut cheese cubes, sugar sticks, and a rainbow of sauces and spices in glass bottles. It would be uncouth of me to badmouth her while she's not here to defend herself. Her absent is felt. <laughs> As is the absent of chef, healer, and pet. She's, uh, she, she sets a steaming t uh, plate of meat down in front of Tank, adjusting her glasses. Here, Tank. I never thanked you properly for allying a pet, uh, allying pet during the AB game. No problem. One of them was even on purpose. <laughs> now get that shit out of my face. I'm fucking vegan. Huh? That's surprising. Huh. Okay. Interesting, Tank. I never expected you to be vegan, of all things. Interesting. <laughs> While everyone tucks their uh, tucks into their food, Suit stands up and tinks his glass. I mean, it could be, but why would he lie on that? Tink, tink. I'd like to address the room. Imp gobbles down a fistful of sugar sticks and reaches across Suit's face for more. Address your way. <clears throat> the next Toad Rule game sh uh, surely looms. Before anyone, before we lose anyone, who might have information that could, uh, let me put it this way instead. Yesternight was an ab ab abhorrent blur much like a surprise dusk exam once foisted on me and my studious peers atop the black high roost fires of my university an exam which i aced but presently i feared my thesis on our situation would score an unholy zero writ with the darkness the darkest crimson fiend blood i'm bereft of answers to most questions raised thus far. Uh, can you speak in English? Uh, I did not understood a word that you said there. So I turn to you all. Let's take a moment to precolor it, shall we? Perhaps some of us have questions to which others hold the answers. Perhaps if we uh, conglomerated our accounts, they'd equate to a useful conclusion. Something resembling a damn grip. Let's interlocute. Yeah, he is fancy. A group discussion ensues. Everyone talks over each other. 
mostly, uh, which is mostly Imp's fault because he intentionally places his cute comments and his little shit-eating opinions in exactly the right places to stoke as many arguments as possible. Eventually, Mimi raises her hand and waits po politely until the fighting dies da down. Ah, yes, young Simeon. Save us from this squabble. Okay, I have a question about protection. Um, if the point of this whole thing is for people to die, why did dead ghosts even give protection out in the first place? That is kind of a smart question. Been wondering that. The deal's sweet too. He saved Healer from getting his melon split in the middle just this afternoon. Of course, I was already on point, but still, it shook me to see him follow through like that. Which one of you fucking guys said the ask trap, eh? Just trying to whistle down the numbers down or what? If I ever find out who did that shit, can we just add dead ghost? Uh, as dead ghost, why he chose to give out protection? Um, not telling you. Uh, I don't know what that word's supposed to be. To be you. I have a theory, but perhaps we should dispense with this raucous crosstalk and take turns sharing our ideas. Oh. Oh. Interesting. I can choose. Uh, I think it might have a hidden downside. Maybe. Maybe. Veritably tank. Protection is sweet and savory, but it comes with a toxic copper aftertaste. Suit pushes his, up his glasses. Thick sunset fills uh, each lens. He's doing the anime thing. He's doing the anime thing. He did the anime thing. The flashpoint principle. Damn. Recall, the rules were displayed early. Everyone knows who, who, uh, who does and doesn't have protection. And we all know the exact minute that each person's protection will evaporate. That's the hidden drawback. Protection creates a flashpoint at the 12 and 24 hour marks. Right, like, they know that, hey, this person's protection ends in, like, two hours. Let's jump them and get the chance to get a kill when we can. Uh, what's a flashpoint? It's a temperature at which a liquid sublimates into an ignitable gas. So glimits? Eh? The sudden loss of protection at the 12 and 24 hour marks precipitates in a concentrated point of chaos during which multiple plays are likely to be made at once. Oh, another coin. Did I get all the info for the coin now? Surely, yep. So I have all the info about the coin, but the XP I don't... Yeah, and also the same thing happens with the fishes. The more I catch the same type of fish... I have almost filled up my entire inventory. I'm only missing three items. But let's curtail the dread glances and still uh, and our still quivering maws. Miss Officiary, we spoke of this earlier, in the upper cabin. Please share the plan we came up with. It's simple. We rely on each other. When the train's internal clock chimes 12, we should ensure that we have multiple eyes on Tank, Pet, Mimi, and Suit. That way, if anyone gets attacked, we can protect the victim as a, go uh, victim as a group. And hopefully we can prevent the, our first real death. That's pretty smart. I always say it when I bet on a royal squad at the towers and they just split up and get pa uh, picked up one by one. Dancer raises, uh, raises her hand. I have a question. 
Is it truly safe for us to gather in a large group? Isn't that a form of flashpoint itself? The point at which enough people uh, fit neatly inside the range of someone else's AoE? If we all bunch up at midnight, isn't there a risk of a multi-kill? Is it just me or... Or why does everyone... Why are all you assuming that everyone secretly wants to kill, kill each other in here? I thought mostly we kind of liked each other. Was it naive of me to think that? Everyone looks at their food. Tank looks at her though. Yeah, it was. In a situation like this, you're never ever gonna get a big bitch who clunks up on you and says, I'm gonna fight you. And then she fights you, Mimi. It ain't gonna fucking happen. What's gonna happen is she's gonna bring you food and compl compliment your fucking head and shit. And then, then the next thing you know, Tank slams a palm on the table. Bagoosh. Ah! Exactly. She fucking headshots you with some bullshit move and makes it look like you're the her, your best friend did it so she can turn the group against that fucker that got and get rid of him too. Okay. Hope you enjoyed. I'm just going to finish this act uh, this scene. So, hope you enjoyed, but yeah. Thanks for coming to the stream. It's just basic strategy. Really? He's more, uh, more or less correct, but that doesn't mean we can't trust each other while kindling due to uh, due co uh, caution. I still think the threat of AoE is too high for us to be bunching up. It's safer to spread out. Dancer picks at her food. We shouldn't even be eating dinner together, frankly. Uh. I don't... We don't know enough yet. That is a fair assumption. We don't know enough. We can't play around hypotheticals. We need more information. For now, let's just stick to groups of two or three people. Whoever we trust the most. Yeah, that is a fair... Th that is a fair agreement, I would say. Dancer Imp, if either of you are concerned about AoE, you're free to keep your distance from the rest of us. Now. The officiary looks around for any empty plates and find only tanks. I have another topic of, for our discussion, but it requires a bit of setup. Mimi, put your hands over your ears. I have something upsetting to confess to you all. I want to hear it. Very well. Earlier I lied. Regarding the conductor. In truth, he is already... Oh no! Good you kept the mood light back then. Pet was shaken up enough as it was. But yeah, I figured. As I did, uh, as did I. It seems strange for the Spectre to exclude him arbitrarily. And your downcast, tear stricken eyes, Miss Officiary. They fail to belie the truth in sorrow. The Officiary takes Tank's em empty plate to the kitchen, back turned on the others. Indeed. The conductor is dead. My question for Dead Ghost is Was he already dead when the train departed? Yes. Not telling. Well, you just tell told me. Hmm. Huh, hold on. I've got it. Sure! Just before departure, there was no announcement on the PA system. Instead, wretched black silence fell on our ears. The officiary set, set tanks plate down neatly in the sink. Then we have a problem. I ask you all. She knocks on the doorframe as she re-enters the main room and pulls a pencil from her hair to nibble on while she ruminates. 
How many people boarded this train? Uh, wait. I honestly forgot to count. Wait, let me count it perfect. Uh, personally, so there was the officiary, the gay couple, tank, imp, suit, uh, guardian, and Mimi, no, dancer, dead ghost. Uh, was it all? I don't know what to pick. I'm... I feel inclined to say 12. Because I know that there's a, there, there's a secret 12th person on the train. Someone who hasn't shown... Showed their, their identity yet. The narrator. I know the the narrator is on the train. So technically 12. There's 12 of us. I've counted. What? Am I missing something? Oh, okay, so I'm wrong. Turbulence rattles in the dining cabin window, and the clouds swallow the sun. The ga gas lamps flicker. The correct answer is... 13. Oh! 13 people. What? You think there's a 13th passenger? Stop making stuff up. <laughs> You're telling me there was someone left without a partner during that game? No, I don't think they're our player. I think they're dri driving the train. Gambler. That shadow I saw in the front cabin, will anyone believe me? I, uh, I should build my argument on veri uh, verifiable evidence it instead. At the start of the death game, Dead Goat said, You're all trapped here. Now, 13 motherfuckers, including me. Did he actually said that? As we just established, the conductor was already dead at that point. That does explain why the ghost was so unsure about our number earlier. Just before the first third rule game. Imp puts his feet up on the table too. And he shakes his ha uh, hands around dismissively. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. Don't tell me you generally think she's mistaken, Imp. Oh, there's a hundred percent for sure a 13th passenger hiding somewhere in here. What? It's already confirmed? But we just swooch right past the big fucking contradiction back there. If this fake 13th passenger is supposedly driving the train, that means they must be a pilot, conductor, or aeronaut, right? Those are the only three classes I've heard that can yoke the mastery like this, yeah? Okay. Then where that hallway came come from? The blackout ho uh, holes, the AB rooms, the pitfalls. Who's been altering the space around us? Pilot conductors and aeronauts don't have that in their kits. It c couldn't? It to be dead ghost? No. The wall seems to be bent to his whim. Space alteration isn't part of Gambler's kit either. Then they might be a multi class? Because I don't know if any of the current. Uh, I don't know if anyone. Anyone in the group can alter rooms. I cannot imagine. 
Maybe Chef can alter rooms, but that's a long shot. A very long shot. Maybe the officiary, but again, that's a long shot. No. I've heard rumors about people who can equip multiple badges. Could it be? Oh, okay, this. I will miss, I think. Oh, I got it. Barely. What are they called again? I think it starts with a D. D. Diabetes? Not close. No, no. Close, though. I believe that's hearsay, Mimi. You may be closer to the truth than the rest of us, Mimi. But a multi-class isn't the only possibility. At any rate, I expect we're dealing with like such diabolical shenanigans. It's certain for me the notions of a theoretical person. A person with one mind split across many bodies. Just rip that idea from the myth of Cilia, uh, Cicalia. Hear me out, Imp. It's not as mytho uh, my mythological as it sounds. The group juggles a few more ideas, but they just get farther and farther from the truth. Perhaps we can't say for sure what their class is, how many bodies they have, or even who they are. But we all uh, we can all are agree someone else is in the, here with us. There's a bump in the hallway. What sounds like wheels ripping through 10 feet of carpet of a, uh, a sound. Going from left to right. Is that the monster? We heard it earlier. Hey. Smells like blood. Uh oh. Tank's chair topples as he rushes to the hallway, the walkway door. He sticks his head outside. He looks both ways. But there's no one there. What was that? Did you hear all the wheels as I did? There it is again. I heard something like that earlier. Sure. Relax. The officiary probably just forgot one of the snack trolleys out there or something. It's rolling around in the turbulence. I certainly did not forgot a forget a trolley. Oh well, whatever. Let's just go look and see. It seems dangerous. Everyone spills out into the hallway. Darknet slides its fingers further and further up the walls. The light clacks into a nice, uh, healthy orange of de dusk mode, startling Mimi, Suit, the officiary, and even Noel. Imp giggles. Oh my god, you guys are freaking out so bad. There's literally nothing out there. Also, I'm thinking, it can, it could legit be... Actually, no, it couldn't because Guardian was... Never mind. A rogue snack trolley. Of course. That must be what it was. I suppose it's possible that I failed to secure it tightly enough in the trolley dock. Does, does anyone want to go try and wrangle it up? No. If only two or three people came come with me, I don't want to get jumped before I can see heels again. I'll go. Fuck it. Imp splits off from the group. He throws a lazy hand up over his shoulder as a goodbye. There's no possibly uh, possible way I'll be the first one to die. I'm him. Now hold on. Did we just, uh, didn't we just finish talking about how it would be silly to split up like this? You just finished talking about that. I was on my usual shit. Bye. Imp disappears around the corner. He peeks his face back around and smiles. By the way, there's someone behind you, Mimi. Oh god. Mimi spins around, terror striking her heart like a bolt of black lightning. Huh? Oh, pet. Hello. 
What are you doing here all of a sudden? Oh, where did you come from, pet? Uh, uh, hi guys. I didn't mean to sneak up on you. I just popped back up of the grand table in there. I heard your voices, so I came this way. Hey! Tank scoops him up without asking permission and full-on hugs Pet. Aww. Pet releases an involuntary uh, invol meow as Pet nuzzles and squeezes him. My boy is back already. Don't yell in my ears. I missed you, Pet. Mm, Tank, you're squishing me. Put me down. Tank sets him down. Mimi squats to scratch behind his ears, which he appreciates greatly. I'll be right back. The fishery sprints back into the ch kitchen. You made it out of that pitfall in just a couple of hours, eh? Yeah. At first I was just going to give up and nap all the way into, the, uh, into tomorrow. It felt pointless to even attempt escape. But then the funniest thing happened. The puzzles I could barely reach, they slid down the walls, closer to the floor. The keypads I couldn't press, and the big obfuscators, obfuscation, uh, the things covering secrets like rugs and fake wallpaper patches, they got a lot thinner and lighter. It was like the train itself wanted to make things easier on me. But in the end, it still took me like five hours. Yeah, I'm so hungry. Here, the fishery runs back with a few hairs uh, popped free of her bun, with a bowl of overfilled with sloshing fresh cold water and a tiny plate pop, uh, pop to uh, topped up with meat slices and cheese cubes. Come join my dining experience. Let's get you fed and watered, pet. Okay. Mimi catches Pet on the conversation so far. Give us one second before we jump back in, everybody. Tank and, and Pet huddle. Pet, will you agree to do the plan we talked about last night? Where you sen sense threats the room? And tell me who is the biggest threat? I promise I won't hurt you. Uh, I, won't hur uh, I won't hurt nobody too badly. I'm just getting fed up with all this polite talking shit. It's time to figure out who's who in here. I don't know. I think maybe instead we should... Um... Oh, whatever. Okay, thank. Yeah? Just say the key phrase and I'll use sense stress. Man, really though? Yeah, really. Pet, you're starting to change already. Pet rubs a cheek against Tank Chu, scent marking him for the first time. I guess I am. And Tank, I'm ready to partner with you. Tank blinks. What? what? Nah, I know I offered you a uh, third and all, but that's a bit too sudden, buddy. It's a multi-day process, so we'll have to th uh, some time to think about it. And we can always cancel it before it resolves, if you want, but... I'm sure my must master will understand that I had to do this to survive. If he doesn't, then maybe he's not as great of a guy as I thought he was. Pet, well, fucking, you're gonna make me tear up over here. <laughs> But, uh, let's play it cool, Tank. Everyone's looking at us like we're chef and healer. Uh, right. I don't feel that way about you, so, uh, so, so, just so you know. Pet blinks. Yeah, me neither. About you. I didn't even think about it like that. Good. First you gotta tell the others about sense stress. Lay some groundwork. Right, gotcha. Pet and tank, uh, tank and Pet on the huddle. Listen up, guys. Pet's got something to say. Hey, let me just preamble this. Pet explains how sense threat works and shares the results uh, 
the scan he did two minutes before the departure. Yeah, that. So, for example, Chef, Healer, and Tank average out to a middling threat. Seagull. Got it. And who checked your threat level, pet? How fascinating. What a useful ability. Though it seems that uh, it seems that Paint Imp and myself to be a high threat. We both uh, we were both separated squarely in the upper cabin at that time. Goodness, how incriminating! Suit blushes, but everyone's looking at him like he could never be a threat at all. Where does the thirteenth passenger fit into all this? If we're if they're driving, they must have been in the front cabin preparing for departure but the conductor's cabin had a reading of no threat are they really no threat to us maybe they were hiding or yeah denser also have a, a denser also have actually mm Maybe they're hiding. I mean, we barely looked around all, at all before I left my cabin. That is, that is a terrifying toss. Has everyone checked the bunk, their bunk rooms, closets, and luggage shelves for stowaways? No. Surely would have noticed this whole person by now. Are they exceptionally small, perhaps? Wait, am I really a threat to them? Oh, as in the... They may, uh, they may have been hiding in, on the exterior, right? The AOE of for sense threat is spherical. It does goes a ways beyond the train in all directions. They would have... Uh, had to run away from the train, then all the way back into the conductor's cabin in just a few minutes. I suppose we can counter consider their threat level unknown for now. The clouds regurgitate is uh, what is left of the sun for one last flicker of daytime. It's getting late, my brain hurty. Uh... We're sliding a bit too far down the slope, I feel. Let's reel it by back in. Almost everyone's plate is empty. Pet scarfs the rest of his food down real quick too. One paw on his food bowl. I'm glad you're alright, Pet. Eat well. Okay. Are the rest of you finished? No, not yet. Let me collect your plates. Indeed, our ease has been taken, and our sub substance savor is savored. Let's get Pet situated in his cupboard. Sure. <laughs> you must be tired, must, uh, mustn't you? Actually, uh, I'm not that sleepy. Pardon me? Before we all disperse, may I bring up one more thing? Let's ensure that we're correctly inter uh, interpreting this threat data. I think we shall, should all know, uh, show our tickets. Where's this coming from all of a sudden? I've already checked everyone's ticket prior, prior to departure. If we're assigning people threat levels, and those threat levels are based on which cabin they were seated in, then the cabin stamp on our ticket that is a basic piece of proof to ask for, isn't it? I feel that way, at least. I don't mean to speak for anyone else. The officiary told me the whole time. She didn't check where exactly Mimi sat. More importantly, though, I'd like to 
verify some hearsay. Lucky Spectre's profit margin for the last six years. Year six has been very good. And then keep. No, it has decreased in year four. But other than that, it has been increased ever since. Everyone produces their tickets except Mimi and the Officiary. Dancer Cherry, Null Cherry, Suit Upper, Pet Lower, Tank Leaf. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm also included in this. That goes Cherry. Ah, of course, the mere meteor uh, meteoric threat result. It was you. When I got that result from the for the Cherry Cabin, that must have been my ability of saying, like, the chance of this guy popping off is almost zero. So, but if he does... If I do, I kill the dinosaurs. Rest in peace, my great noble ancestors. <laughs> Maybe it has been growing more and more panicked this whole time. Um, uh, um, I don't seem to have my ticket on me. Well, I can vouch for you, Mimi. Your mother sh showed me two tickets for the lower cabin when you both board boarded. Didn't I just expose uh, express my desire for verifiable evidence, though? Dancer steps up to Mimi and leans over her. Does Guardian have your ticket, perhaps? Um, maybe. But but I swear I had it in uh had it this afternoon. I don't understand. It's not like she could have taken it from me. Uh, I have three shots of this. Oh god, this is bad. Oh god, no, please don't go back. Okay, I'm gonna fail. Yeah, this is a bad spot to be it to be at. Yeah, I failed. Damn it. <laughs> Tank faces dancer. Hey bitch. Tank, no. Dancer, please step uh, please back off of Mimi. You're scaring her. Tank, can't you tell? Another floor relief. Uh, yeah, another clover leaf. Interesting. Oh. Sorry, my mistake. I don't mean to be so intimidating. It's the Lilian in me. My red eyes, my general stillness of movement, and my flat effect. They tend to unnerve others. I apologize. Dancer backs off of Mimi, but her football grazes Suit's shoe. Pardon me, miss. He and the officiary flank her from behind. Excuse us, we just have a few questions for you regarding your ticket. This threat scan. Hmm? Oh, the meteoric threat reading, is it? I wasn't seated in the cherry cabin at the time of the scan. Tank and Pet, you both crossed my path outside of Leaf, didn't you? That's true, but, uh, Dancer, you're forgetting something. Right as you left, you told us you were going to the upper cabin next. You even asked me if I saw anyone heading up there, remember? I didn't. Um, well, I guess I saw you heading up there. But you're the only one. The last petal of sunlight withers down uh, to black, uh, black nightfall. Dancer blinks. Of course, I suppose that would mean I fall under the high threat umbrella then, if the scan went off when I was outside the upper ca cabin. But Suit, Imp, and the officiary are also included in that reading. 
that doesn't mean very much then, does it? It wouldn't, if it was the only issue. But, um, how do I put this? My familiar, Enkidu, happened to notice the smudged ink on your ticket earlier. You boarded in quite, uh, in quite a hurry, didn't you? I can vouch. I told you already I had to catch this train last minute because my air uh, airship. You claim it was cancelled due to the snow, yes, I recall. Unfortunately, you seem to have left the contradiction unrectified in that story. As Imp yes uh, noted as yesternight, uh, they hardly gave you much at all for the journey. By that, he me meant that airships have a rather austere dining policy. Passengers only get sufficient food and water when they clock notches on a suit suitcase scale. And yet you s claim to have no luggage. I'm an ascetic? Ascetic? I don't know what that means. Then you should have brought food or water with you in preparation for the airship. I simply... Sure. Now do take a mo uh, moment and listen to me before you re retort. I would advise again cl against claiming that you threw perfectly good food and water away when you switched to this trail. I don't believe any of our hearts contain the good charity required to entertain a lie like that. She is getting suspicious. What exactly you, do you suspect me of? Won't you spell it out for me? Well, um... Certainly. If it is the case that you are desperately hunting the last monster, and you boarded tonight with that goal, then I admit it. I'll be satisfied, and we can treat you with the caution of a true hunter brings upon uh, that a true hunter brings upon themselves. But if that's not the case, I would like to ask you if you uh, if you would be comfortable with staying in this room under super supervision for a short duration of time, simply until we can find some way to ver verify you're not the monster. Because it would seem that you are you were running away from something with great urgency when you boarded. The answer is silent. Then she smiles weakly. I can understand your concerns. She retreats to the room, uh, uh, to the corner of the room, to be with Noel. Please let me talk it over with my friend before I agree to anything. Alright, that's enough. The room turns to Mimi. We are, we have some reason to suspect her, sure, but that's not enough. Uh, that's enough. We're not gonna put her under the under house arrest on the first dang day because her ticket is a little smudgy. And she doesn't have luggage. That's just too much. She holds her hat down and clanks over to Dancer. Here, I'll walk you to the door. I think you should go. Don't listen to these bozos. They're bullying you. For a moment, Dancer is surprised. Her natural calm washes back over her. Very well. I'll take my leave. Fuck. No. I was against, uh, I was against us gathering here in the first place. Dancer? I don't know if it's her. I don't know if she's got nothing to do with this. But whoever has the highest threat level, whoever that is in this room, they gotta be involved in some serious kind of way, don't they? How could it just happen to be the true code killer end up, ended up in this situation? Completely by accident. Everyone stands still. Suit and the officiary nearest the tall window, Mimi by the grand table, ghost in the wall, a dead ghost in the wall, tank by the doorway, and Nolan dancer by the lunch chairs in the corner. The train punches through a massive cloud bank, 
and the window turrets over the uh, over with gray. It's getting tense here. I'm gonna put an end to this death game. That's the signal. Pet uses the ability ability sense threat and uh, holds the cast time for ten seconds. During those ten seconds, everyone looks at Tank. What? Why are you saying such a thing now? Come again. Are you feeling all right, Tank? Tank? Tank scratches behind his head. Uh, did I say something weird? Uh, hold on. I meant to say, uh, uh, what was it now? Results. Wall. Meteorite trick trash, aka dead ghost. It's fine. We already know. Grand Temple. No brain badge found. Huh. Tall window. Middling treth. Doorway. Vic situ. What is that? The word mean vixitundus tress. I don't even know what that means. Lounge chairs high tress. It's on her masked person tanks. Uh, it's her or the masked person tank. Gotcha, buddy. Let me take a my best guess then. Pull aggro. Target dancer. Fight me. What did you just... Since her body automatically lurches into pursuit of tank. What is he doing? Her eyes widen. She feels herself prepare to use an unknown ability. She shoulder checks Mimi out of the way. Her body enraptured with the urge to destroy tank while her mind ri rides in the passenger's seat. Oof! Tank sprints out of the dining cabin towards the front of the train. Tank, why are you? Where are you going? His voice booms from the hallway. Just pulling her away from you guys in case of a crossfire. Or fire. Everyone falls falls into chaos. Suit trips over the officiary, trying to grab Dancer by the tail by her tail before she let she's let loose into the rest of the train. But his claws just scrape through the air and inky squaws and flaps off his shoulder on the way down. Dead ghost cackling in the background while Noel leaps stylishly over Mimi and joins the chase. Oh man. In the walkway, Tank tuds past the leaf cabin in a, at a crazy speed over the sealed shut pitfall. Denser eyes try to aim on him as he ducks and weaves. I have no protection. What are you doing? Why are you attacking me? I can't. I ain't attacking you, bitch. I'm forcing you to attack me. That's the power of pull aggro. <laughs> well, I think you almost fired something up there, don't? Didn't you? Come on, this way. Candle, cancel this ability at once. Not till you show me why your threat level is so high. Thanks, kids, to. To a stop in the anteroom, right in front of the long black hallway, careful to step around the contents healer's tail bag, which was still lay, uh, which still lay scattered all over the floor, and he turns to face Dancer as she barrels towards him. Oh my God, he's gonna go on a fight with Dancer. That's not. Oh God. Also, welcome back. Here's a good spot. Let's tussle. Dancer's eyeline stabilizes on Tank's throat. She prepares to use an unknown ability. Come on now. Hit me. Dancer uses the ability pirouette. No. I'll decapitate the. I'll decapitate him. Her football strikes off, uh, strikes off the ground with effortless precision, and she rises like a helium leaf, twirling with impeccable form. Her paws held tight in front of her clenched stomach, her body pneumatic, weightless, aligned exactly with the highest 
ideal of grace. I I actually no, Tank still have the protection, doesn't he? Actually no, he doesn't. Never mind. He doesn't have protection anymore. When she lands, her eyes flash and the ability initiates a 3 second delay before it fires. 1 Oh, that's a new pause. Two. Full agri grow forces her to keep approaching Tank, and she slips on a tiny figurine carved out of poison bark. Three. Her eye line jolts upwards. Instead of Tank's throat, she now aims at the peephole in the wall, the one that leads into Mimi's safety locket. Raw hit scan damage flies from her point of focus and severs a lock of Tank's hair before it portals into the peephole and out of the locket. What? Huh? Tank cancels pull aggro. Dancer is pale and blank. The others weren't too far behind. They saw everything. There's your fucking answer now. And we didn't have to play mind chess for six hours to figure it out. Dancer stares at the ground, humiliated. Tank points two fingers at her. She's the real threat here. That ability she used on me. It was strong enough to sever the cabin between the lower cabin and the rest of the damn train. You better believe it could take somebody's head clean off. She's got a deep. Uh, she's like got a fucking decap on the three second cast time. Tank. Pet leaps up onto Tank's chest, claws buried buried in his shirt, sniffing him furiously. Are you okay? Oh my god. You- she- she almost- you almost- I- I wasn't scared for you, but you almost got- you almost- Nah, I didn't almost, buddy. Don't you worry. If- uh, even if that should hit me, I would have been just fine. Mine would have need to launch a rescue mission to get heals out of the pitfall early, but I would have been fine. Miss, were you really hiding an ability like that from us? Dancer looks at Noel. Still silent, but... Noel doesn't do anything. Dancer beseeches eye contact from three people, one by one. Each of them cowers as she aims at them. It's getting very tense. She opens her maw. No. There's no point. Dancer just walks away. No one goes after her, either. So much for putting her under su supervision. Indeed, how are we going to move forward from this? Attention, all passengers. The second third rule game will now begin. Oh no. Fucking kidding me. No. How about something nice and simple this time around? Since we got a lot of shit going on already. How about... Team Hide and Seek? Oh dear. There's gonna be a death for sure. Far down the walkway, someone is cr uh, crumpled to the floor. Crawling towards the group. Guys, someone's hurt over here. Where? He's right. Look down the, the walkway. Isn't that... If you're a seeker and you find a hider, declare them verbally as found and they will die. And until this game is over, three monster checks on dead people. Yes, away. Uh, yeah, guess away. You won't die if you're wrong. 
See? Nice and simple. Oh god, this is gonna be chaos. The crumbled, broken thing scrabbled down the walkway carpet is... Guardian. Yes, is she finally dead? Uh, I don't know. Oh god, she looks bad. I won't care if she dies. Maybe. Don't come near me. We still need... Guardian cuffs up blood. She pulls herself under one of the orange dusk mode lights, which eliminates bruises all over her face. We still need the hint. Mom! Did Denser do that to her? No, she just turned the corner a moment ago. She just had no time. Hold on, Mom, I'm... True, but... Hey, 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 whoa, whoa, stay back. There's someone else there, kid. There's someone right behind her. A shat... Who's that? A shadow approaches Guardian, smooth and still. Whoever it is, they are short. They seem to hover across the carpet. Imp? No. Oh. The shadow isn't hovering, and he's not walking either. He's rolling. Is that the mysterious 13th peep uh, person? Which are both affixed with thick, blood-stained silver wheels. It's Johnny! The duelist, I think. Oh, damn. He skids to a, top, a stop behind Guardian and lifts his silver steel oar aloft over her. What? Oliver? I've never heard of an Oliver uh, in terms of Vocaloid. That is new for me. <laughs> the 13th passenger hiding in the train. Be careful of them. Mukuro Ikusaba. Sorry, wrong game. It's the infamous young duelist. The Scourge of the Southern Towers. Cruel Johnny Silver? Huh. I never heard of them. Team Hiders will be... Healer, Dancer, Guardian, Pet, Suit, and the Officiary. Your name is Johnny? I've never heard of you, but you're the same age as me, aren't you? C come on now, I I think the other's just mistaking you for some other kid, right? You're just a shy to uh, just a shy to uh, stowaway. There's no way you're you're really a <laughs> Johnny slams the oar over down on Guardian's head. She goes still. Oh dear. He grabs her by the ankle. And he then pucks one shoe at a 45 degree angle. Heel wheel to the ground. And skates off into the darkness with her limp, uh, limp body. Team Seekers will be... Chef, Tank, Mimi, Noel, Imp, and me. I won't be declaring anyone his find out though. That would be unfair. The game starts in 10 minutes. Good luck. Mom! Good merry weather. Everyone, run! Fuck, what do you think you're going, kid? Stamina potion. I'm missing two items. Everyone panics, scatters except Tank, who lumbers after Johnny and Pat, who certainly can't flee in fear, nor let Tank go up by himself. <clears throat> I actually already forgot. Whoops. His little paw, uh, paws pap frantically on the carpet as he joins the chase. 
Johnny dips his oar into a solid wall. He carves a wake through it. The tassels on his sailor's hat goes lateral and sparks fly his wheel shoes as he 90 degree hairspin hair drift the corner into a middle cabin. Tank corners him into the bunk room. Where do you take Guardian off to? Tank approaches slowly, both paws up, ready to grapple. You're done, kid. Ain't no exits in here. Just put the fucking weapon down and... Tank is gonna die. Tank is gonna die. John, young Johnny, uh, John, kicks off backwards. He rolls away into the shadows. Smiles in is the last thing to disappear. Tank stomps after him, but there's nothing except a blank cabin wall. Guys! Suit and the officiary follows Imp Hush voice and duck into the darkness of the upper cabin. Yeah, I do like Tank too. They all hide behind the bunk beds. Imp's got a weird teal blanket all huddled over himself. Imp, a duelist. He was... Oh, Inky, where are you? Where are you? Sure. There you are. Return to my sh shoulder post-haste. I thought I lost you in the maelstrom. Sure. There you are. It's alright now, my word. What a shock. It's alright now. Calm down, Inky. Calm down. Calm down. Inky is fairly calm. But suit shakes like a washing machine with a cinder block in it. Imp and the fishery are both struck silent for a moment. A uh, fishery is this. Ah shit, I, that really scared him. I thought he was a little more put together than that. The tree top, uh, the top tree question Bolton at the AWI Abattoir Investigation Department. How did our invest the highest value monster escape? Who was on the shift at the inn connected to our s to southern branch? Was Azel Spritzel for one on the fire of the fire? Imp rubs his back while the officiary suits suit. Her uh, her voice soft voice soft yeah but uh, he gr uh, gibbers to his raven for a few minutes soon. The, his tremors wane. I understand your shock suit. To think of all the classes that can manipulate space. It was a duelist who was hidden in these walls. It hardly even sounds plausible to begin with. Why did Johnny wait until now to show himself? Why did he target Guardian but spare the rest of us? I should have knocked down the, uh, knocked on the grand table a uh, uh, before I told that story this afternoon. Well, I think it's obvious that... Silence, Imp. Please do not let him distract himself with some deductions. I... I need a moment, both of you. My... my apologies. Oh. Enki. Oh, you're alright. You're alright, Enki. Oh. Chef and healer sif sit and fiddle with rainbow-colored cu puzzle cu cubes. Chef rubs his temple and calculates each play, his toque even more askew than usual. Healer twists the color around mostly at random. It's not working, dude. You got this, Cricket. Just turn the red square forward. Don't worry about the blue one. But you said uh, they should always stay together. Yeah, they should. Well, when I tried to move them both forward together, the blue one always ended up too far ahead. They keep getting misaligned. Then just reset it. But my progress... Killer chews on his cube a bit. Ah. Here, I'll help, help you. Are they doing really Rubik's cubes? Chef grabs Healer's cube and wipes up the drool, uh, drool off with his shirt. He twists it around. Silent. Healer resets his ha head on... rests his head on 
chef's shoulder and watches his paws work. Nice sound. Oh, clack. Solved. Oh! The squares are right next to each other, but the puzzle is treating, uh, treating them like they are in completely different places? Or uh, did you just come up with that strat right now? I don't know. Moment of insight or something. A thumb-sized compartment uh, opens in the side of the salt cube and reveals a tiny uh, cross-hatched radio speaker uh, which blips out Morse code. Chef just throws the stupid blippy cube to the side of the room though. Fuck, this is exhausting. Can we take another cuddle break? Aww. Healer mumbles. Sure, we'll cuddle you. Let's go. On one condition. Tell me about your next plan. Promise me you will. Not even all uh not even all future plans. Whatever. I'm over it. I'm all I'm asking you is for a bit of shut short term comfort, okay? Thanks heavy footfalls tud above them uh, by above them. They both look up for a second, then they return their uh, their eyes to each other. Killer takes Chef's paws and squeezes it. Another clover leaf. I'm getting a lot of stuff. Wait, that's flower. Huh. I can't even depend on the solidity of the walls and the floor in here. Just give me one little thing I can hold on to. Chef sighs. If I promise to tell you about my next plan, all of it, then you have to promise that you'll do exactly what I say, no matter how crazy it sounds, alright? Even if I tell you to give up. Even if I tell you to use tail split. Huh? What is that ability? Not that I'd ever do that, but that's the level of ready I need you to be. Chef, that's... Okay. I understand. Huh. Where did you get that bruise on your face, Imp? Johnny gave me a, a good fucking whack of it as or when I went to go investigate that sound. The sound of his wheel shoes. And instead of warning the rest of us about the killer loose on the train, you ran and hid? Yes, yeah, so... Suit has joined Imp on the in the blanket. He scratches under Enki's beak with a claw, eyes dull. You didn't fight fight back against him, Imp. There he goes fishing for information again, trying to see if I'm a non-combat class, huh? Fuck no. I'm not gonna one v one a duelist. It's a terrible matchup for me. My class is better suited for uh, to scheming in the shadows. I see. Bam. Foiled again. Invertisement two years ago. Four, it's been four years since the max extensions of all monsters. And now, finally, free XP weekend is back at the LS Casino. Let's go. To enter the raffle, raffle simply surrender your badge to the scrutiny of the, our most elite staff. The Platinum, Platinum Deities? Or Dixies? This ad was pulled from uh, the following Monday in the free weekend was never mentioned by uh, by any newspaper again. I hope I'm soon done with that though. Only a few rem uh, minutes remain until the next game starts. Hold on, Miss Officiary. You don't see uh, you don't have protection and you ha will soon become a hider, an imp, a seeker. Perhaps we should split up after all. The officiary le levels her gaze at him, all cozy in his blanket. His eyes wander in this sleepless haze and only ex uh, uh, occasionally settle on her face. Imp smiles woozily back at her, fangs out. Better start running! <laughs> I refuse to let him alone at a time like this suit. I'm sure he won't declare me as found and kill me 
Uh, he definitely will. Run while you still can. But you've asked me why I'm so sure. I wouldn't be able to tell you. And I wouldn't be able to believe you. That's a good shot. Oh, come on. There we go. Easy. Yes, I would. Be it's because even if Imp holds no love for anyone else, he has some form of infernal affection on suit. If you were to kill me now, he would lose suit forever. Yeah, I won't kill you. I promise. <laughs> During the blackout suit, you urged me to hide here, claiming you had information that I didn't. What did you mean by that? That information remains at the forefront of my thoughts always. It's the card cardinal reason I boarded this train tonight. I pushed you to hide during the blackout because I feared that the killer was loose on the train. The man who may be responsible for the disappearance of my sister, a woman named Derabella. Ah, huh. then Sir walks in solitude. Where? Where is a door I can lock? She trails and pulls up, uh, uh, trails a paw over the walls. Her fingers follow the grooves engraved in each cabin door. I need to find a hiding spot. Her silent feet consume hours of carpet. She hardly remembers traversing. Somewhere I can take her in my arms and speak to her one on one. Eventually, she settles on the gambling cabin. She hides in one of its private compartments and locks the door. Uh, gambler is this. Lots of space in here. It will suffice. Oh god, I was so careful. And still, I was so exposed. Oh god, please. Help me now. She pushes a poke table out of the way. Chips and cards tumble on the, onto the ground. She doesn't care. Then Sir situates her feet together on the floor and bows. She rises, her arm drapes like silk around the shoulders of someone who isn't there, and her fingers follow the nape of an invisible neck over, out over the curve of a round feminine shoulder. Her eyelids sing shot. She leans in to her passive. Godstepper. Hear this worthless plea for guidance, God, and grant me this dance, so that your word may come down onto my ears and still the darting rhythm of my heart. I surrender myself to you, Ayo. Huh? Please, take the lead. What? They begin to dance under dusk lights. Her god pulls her in the wide circles across the cabin floor, without once looking down. Dancer places the tips of her feet paws precisely into the empty spaces between the fallen chip car and chips and cards, and her ears and tail follow, smearing the individual statements. Of her con uh, of their conversation to get her into an unbroken physical rush. The others have learned of my cap capabilities, my lord. I will be afforded no further opportunity to wait and gather information. From this point on, it will only become harder to execute your will, to complete your quest before the dead deadline. Please guide me, my lord. What? Please tell me what I must do. Dancer falls backwards, limp. Her god catches her by the wrist. One of Dancer's arms dangles, fingertips kissing the floor, while the other is held vertical, gripped tight at the wrist by a hand that isn't there. God, that is creepy. That is creepy. Kill. 
tonight. Man, things are getting worse and worse. Hours pass in silence. No one dares to wander around the train while the sound of wheels echoes down the walkway. Team Hide and Seek. If a seeker finds a hider, they can verbally declare the hider is as found for an instant kill. Until this game is over, you may check if any dead person was the monster, and if you're wrong, you will not die. Yeah, I don't... I didn't you. Okay, the hiders are Suit, Dancer, Healer, Guardian, a Fishery, and Pit. Okay, so of course, Chef and Healer are separated again because... Of course! No M Chef that go tank and Mimi. The train's internal clock chimes midnight. Protection runs out for Mimi, Tank, Pet, and Suit. As promised, Dead Ghost revealed the hint to Guardian and Mimi separately. Yeah. Suit is uh, off, half asleep, all crumbled up with his face smushed against the wooden boards and the, uh, the bunk, uh, bunk room floor next to the hole under the bed. Imp is still wide awake next to him. He's really starting to look unwell. Sure. Enki pecks his uh, his spectacles. Hmm. Hmm. Something the matter mattered, Your Majesty. Below them, Guardian exists the blackout garden. She limps with one shoulder against the wall. That's right. Suit checks his pocket watch. It's midnight. According to Mimi, she must have received the hint. Suit looks at M Enki. She cocks her head and looks right at back at him. Let's try it. S uh, Suit uses. Wait. Oh yeah, no, it's sense thought, not sense threat. Parent teacher interview notes uh, for a young dancer. Refuses to participate in group project. Refuses to speak when called out, called on. Scares her classmates. We're now up to six complaints from their parents. Actively uh, withholds enthusiasm during good faith class activities. Uh, blasphemed a former lion in front of her uh, regi more re religious peers. Secondary interview was scheduled with sister to check for similar issues, but parents postponed for a third time. So it was only a four-letter word. Enkidu, I beseech you, please go off. She cast infinite shadow of the silent gray raven, muffling what he says uh, next from him and from the officiary. The hint I just plucked from the entangled pit of Guardian's mind. Unless I misinterpreted anything, it seems to me the hint th that the hint says the monster is a girl. Huh. So it it could be the officiary, it could be Dancer, it could be Guardian, it could be Mimi. I... Honestly, seeing what uh, Dancer did earlier, I think it might be Dancer. Or it could be Dancer. But yeah, true, it could be Mimi as well. Guardian doesn't uh, even make it out of the ante room before Dancer emerges from the shadows and body blocks her. Suit and Imp holds the, their breath. The officiary is asleep beside them. Yeah. Dan uh, Dancer eyes the dark passageway to the blackout garden behind Guardian, who is barely able to stand from her wounds. No one seems to be in there. Tell me the, the hint right now, or I'll kill you. Holy shit. 
Okay, uh, thing is, uh, I'm getting quite tired. My voice is getting uh, tired, so I kind of hate doing this, but... Wait, I... No, I didn't chose anything. I didn't chose anything. Can I go back? Because I, I, I wanted to... Up here. Okay, I chose dancer. Okay, good. That's the choice I wanted to choose, but I'll actually stop it here for today. I again, I'm really tired. Uh, but no, I, I I wanted to choose dancer anyway. I didn't want to choose guardian. But uh, yeah, my voice is getting tired. I don't know if I'm going to stream tomorrow, but let's end it up here for today. Hope you enjoyed and see you guys next time. Take care.